Yo, Elliot, I have recently been trying to make improvements to my life, hence why I signed up for the KT program. I've been making efforts to establish more of a routine, better my relationships with others, read and set goals. Initially, I felt this was all going well. Then suddenly some demons in the form of unpleasant memories from my teenage years appeared out of nowhere. I'm now 33. When I think back to the people involved, I feel a sense of anger towards them, as well as anxiety and guilt. Initially, I used escapism to try and avoid thinking about it, but then I realized I need to deal with these specific memories as they have popped up from time to time in the past, and I feel this is an unresolved issue and likely have caused some long-term emotional blocks. I'm thinking that it might help if I write about the events reflect on what they could mean for me and others involved, reflecting on how things are different now and try to move on by continuing to better myself and work towards goals. Do you have any advice on what to do? So this is interesting because I remember when I was first being catechized, I learned about the faith and I was watching a lot of YouTube videos uh, about heaven and hell and uh, judgment and what happens in the afterlife. It was very fascinating stuff. And I remember listening to a... Uh, a, a pastor, a priest, uh, a priest named uh, Father Ripperger, and he says that when we face our judgment, right, we, we, we see God, the judge at our death and then sentencing, right, that all the things that are in our memory are the things that we'll have to face. So in other words, you know, when they say that you'll, you know, God will open up the book and, you know, in, in cartoons, they're like, yeah, so he's got a book where he wrote down all the things that you did. It doesn't really work that way. In essence, whatever is in the content of your mind and in your heart is that which you'll have to be confronted with on that day, right? And so he asserts that it is of our best interest to ask God while we're still here to remove those memories from our life. And I couldn't help but to think of this video and this advice when I'm reading, reading your questions because as you say, you know, suddenly some demons in the forms of unpleasant memories appeared out of nowhere. And instead of wrestling with those, and I've said this before too, you don't wanna wrestle with demons because Satan is smarter than you. You're not going to win. Don't even engage them. What you would be better off doing is praying to God and asking him to erase from your memory all of these things, all of your wrongdoings. This is what a repentant, this is what true repentance means. A true repentance means, okay, I screwed up, I admit I was wrong, uh, or, or whatever it is, somebody else did something wrong to me, but I'm attached to it now, and I'm turning away, and it's behind me, and I could move forward in faith. But every time we turn around, or every time we remember, or every time it runs up behind us, taps us on the shoulder and reminds us that it was happening, it still lives rent-free in your head. And that is where it's going to destroy you. If you've done things bad in the past and have repented but still are bothered by it, or something happened to you in the past and you've moved on to, from it and it's still bothering you, that means it's still attached to you it's still an issue to you. And when you have an examination of conscience, when you face your judgment, those very things that remain in the content of your mind, not God's book, are the things that you're going to be um, confronted with. So he, I don't know if this is all right or wrong, I don't know, I'm just telling you what he says and it's, and it's very resourceful and helpful, if nothing else, that it is up to you then to ask God to remove the memory of it from you, right? Ask God, God, please, I've moved past this, but it's still haunting me. Please remove this memory from my mind. Please wash me clean. And so before this video, I, you know, I was, I was picking up my Bible because I remember also that there is a Psalm written by King David, Psalm 50, that the Orthodox referred to as the Psalm of repentance. And there's a part of this Psalm where he starts to, um, describe what he wishes God would do for him. And I understand that this is not something you did. I get it. It's not something you did. It's something that happened to you, but it still haunts you. And I, and I want you to, 
take into consideration everything I'm, everything I'm saying, not in relation to guilt and shame for what you did, but attachment to the trauma you, 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 you suffered from. The fact that you bring it in or it's brought up to you means that it still haunts you and is living rent free in your head. So one of the ways to resolve this is to ask God to remove it from you. So in the, in the biblical story, King David, righteous guy by all means, but fallen because we all are. It's so funny, all the guys in the Bible, like all the, all the greatest men in the Bible also are like the biggest sinners. Like they screw up. They make, they, they screw up. David screws up. I don't want to go into the story about how he screwed up, but it was pretty screwed up what he did when he screwed up. And so he recognizes his, his error. He repents, but then he writes prayers. He writes, they call them Psalms. And so Psalm 50 is a Psalm of repentance where he recognizes, wow, I screwed up. I was so wrong. God, help me now as I'm trying to make reparations and repair. And so Psalm 50, uh, between nine, uh, uh, what would you say it? Sentence number nine and 15 goes like this. And just think about, just think about this is, this is a man praying for God to help him be washed clean of bad thoughts, remembrances of wrongs if you will he says thou shalt he's saying this is what you could do for me god please thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop and i shall be cleansed thou shalt wash me and i'll be made whiter than snow to hear thou shalt give joy and gladness and the bones that have been humbled shall rejoice turn away thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities create in me a Clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within my bowels. <laughs> and this is like the oldest version of the Bible. This is Dewey Rames. And so he says bowels. But anyway, I think that's significant. There are some Orthodox Christians that pray this every single day. But I just think in terms of there were things that were haunting to me, I'd ask God just this. Sprinkle me and clean me. Make me whiter than snow. Turn away your face from my sins. Blot out my iniquities. Create in me a pure heart, a new heart, a right spirit within me. Right now, you have a haunted spirit within you. You have a conflicted spirit within you, and even an, an angry, resentful spirit within you. You call them demons, and rightfully so. They're wrecking you even though it's just a memory. So like David in the Bible, I propose to you that rather than trying to analyze it, try, rather than trying to wrestle with it, rather than trying to explain it away in the, you know, the psychoanalytical way that the world so worships now, instead turn your gaze up, turn towards God, Allah, right? Are you, are you, if you're Muslim, it's Allah, that's fine. But God wants to help you. God wants to cleanse you. God wants you to turn to him and say, help me. Help me. Help rid me of these memories. Scatter these demons from attacking me and make my mind, make my heart, make my soul clean. Right? Ask God. Yes, he's a, you're a Muslim. So I, I'm sure that the same advice... It, it, it's all relevant, right? Muslims are Abrahamic, right? We're all, we're all children of Abraham, right? And I don't know how anybody else takes that, but I, I, that's the way I see it, right? You guys recognize the Bible. There's, there's wisdom therein. And you, the, the, there may be graces associated with it. I, I, I believe there are. So anyway, uh, I'm not well-versed in the theology of Islam, but I'm sure that you can pray. I'm sure that you can pray and you can ask for uh, uh, forgiveness as, and of course, forgiveness for allowing these thoughts to continue to haunt you, but then also for help. Please wash this from me. Take this from me. That's right. Yes, yeah, son. People of the book. Correct. Correct. Abrahamic faith. That's the way I see it, man. I, I, don't, I don't know, but I, I see it that same way as well. So ask God. Ask him to remove this from you, make you whiter than snow. <laughs>
Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.